This next video is a demonstration of the full microstates method of determining all the term symbols of an atom when we have its basic electron configuration. It requires understanding quantum numbers and rules about electron spin, which you can find in other videos. And by using this full method, which is very detailed and a little bit time consuming, you can develop a greater appreciation of just how easy the ground state only method of determining term symbols is. The first two steps in the full microstates method require us to find the total number of microstates possible and second, to find the range of possible values for the total spin and the range of possible values for the total momentum. So let's begin by determining the total number of possible states for step one. So the number of states is going to depend on the number of positions, the number of electrons, and the number of holes. Electrons are exactly what we know them to be. These are the spins, whether they be up or down. The positions are the number of possible slots. Since this is a p orbital, that little n is going to be 6. Because it's carbon, it's a p2, so we have two electrons. And the idea behind holes is that the spaces that could hold electrons but aren't holding them are counted as holes. And that's why we take the number of positions and subtract the number of electrons. So that's going to be 4. And we can use our tricks for factorials to rather quickly determine that this is 6 times 5 times 4 factorial up top. We have 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, and we have another 4 factorial. These will cancel. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 divided by 2 gives me a total of 15 possible states. So, 15 possible. The next step to determine the max range for the angular momentum and the max range for the spin is pretty straightforward. If we take our p orbital, plus 1, 0, minus 1. If we put two electrons in, and we put them both in the plus 1, then our L max is going to be plus 2. That means that we can go from plus 2 down to minus 2. So our L range starts at plus 2 and goes down to minus 2. For the spins, if we have one spin up and then we unpair and we have a second spin up, our max spin could be plus 1. If they're paired up, that's going to be a 0. And if they're both spin downs, that's minus 1. So our S range goes from a plus 1 to 0 to minus 1. And if we notice, uh, we have five possibilities for the L range and three possibilities for the S range. We multiply those two together and we see that we again have 15, which matches the number of possible states. Step three in the full microstates method requires us to write out all the possible states. Now because in step one and two we figured out the range of values for L and the range of values for S, this tells us how many different charts we would need to write out and how many lines we would have for it. So we'll start by saying if our S is plus one. So if S is plus one, that means that both of the electrons are going to be spinning up. And now we can have the range of L starting at plus two, plus one, zero, minus one, and ending at minus two. Now, because we're dealing with the p orbitals, we have three possible uh, or sub orbitals to put these in. So we could have the plus one, the zero, or the minus one. So we'll need to fill out this chart of all possibilities. If S is going to be a plus one, that means that we have two spin ups. So it is impossible to get a plus two for the L. But we can get a plus one by having a spin up here and a spin up here, because this will add to plus one. 
Uh, we can get a zero if we have a spin up in the plus one suborbital and a spin up in the minus one. Those L's are going to add up to zero. We can get a minus one in the same way as we did with the plus one by putting one in the zero, one in the minus one. It is not possible to get a total L of minus two because we would need both of those spinning up in the minus one suborbital. This completes everything for S equals plus one. It's straightforward to note that while we would need to write a third chart for S equals minus one, it's going to be identical to this one except that all of these are spinning down. So the next one we want to draw is if S equals zero. And in this case, we'll have the same setup Now, because S equals zero means that the electrons are opposite spin, it's possible to put them both in the plus one suborbit and get a plus two. So this is a configuration here. Uh, in order to get a plus one, we can have a spin up here and a spin down here. And here's where microstates gets a little bit involved. The black pair represents one configuration. We could also have a spin down in the plus one suborbit and a spin up in the zero. That would still give us an L of plus one. For zero, it's possible to simply have a pair sitting both in the zero suborbit. That L will add up to zero. But then we could split them. I could have a spin up in the plus one and a spin down in the minus one. That counts as a configuration. We'll use color and take the red because I could reverse it the same way I did here. So I can have a spin down in the plus one and a spin up in the minus one. And so those red ones form a pair as well. Finally getting to minus one, you can see that we'll do something similar to what we did before. We have a spin up in the zero, a spin down in the minus one, and then switch to having a spin down in the zero and a spin up in the minus one. So just as the black one before represented, one configuration in blue does the same. And then to get a minus two, I'll have a spin up and a spin down in the minus one suborbit. So we should have 15 possible combinations, right? Well, since this counts for plus one and we reverse them for minus one, that's one, two, three, four, five, six over here, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we have fifteen possibles and we've completed step three where we have written out every possible microstate. Step four is to collect everything and make a single chart showing the number of different ways that you can get an L and S combination. So, in this case, we want to have the range of L uh, going this way and the range of S going this way. So, S, we can have a plus one, a zero, or a minus one. For the L's, it was plus two, plus one, zero, minus one, and minus two. And what we want to do now is write down every number of ways we could get each combination. And so for that, you would need to refer back to the charts in step three. Well, we had one way that we could get S being zero and have an L plus two, same for minus two. For an S of plus one and an L of plus one, we had one way we could do that. We had two ways for S to be zero and L to be plus one and one way here. For a S of plus one and an L of zero, we had one possible way to do it. For S and L to both be zero, we had three possible ways to make that happen. We had one here. We had one way to get a minus one for L and a plus one for S. We had two ways to get S equals zero and L and minus one. And one way here. So that completes writing out the table. 
So the next thing we have to do is actually figure out what all the terms are and how we would separate them. So we start at the topmost entry. So if L is 2, and S is 0, then the term symbol that corresponds to that is going to be a singlet D. Now once we have that in place, we recognize that the singlet D requires us to eliminate from here a 5 by 1 vector. Reasoning is the 5 comes from the 5 possibilities that an L equals 2 gives us. Plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. And the 1 comes from the only possibility we have for S, which is 0. So we would strike one entry from this 5 by 1. So I'll do that now. So this becomes a 0. This becomes a 1. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 1. And this becomes a 0. At this point, we want to find the next term. So the next term, we're going to have our topmost and uh, leftmost entry that's here. So that is an L equals 1 and S equals 1. S equals 1. So that gives me a triplet P. And now this triplet P, well, that requires me to strike a 3 by 3 range. 3 because if L equals 1, it can run from plus 1 to 0 to minus 1, that's 3. If S equals 1, it can run from 1 to 0 to minus 1, which is also 3. So that requires a 3 by 3 section. So I would capture this 3 by 3 section, and I'm going to need to reduce each of those by 1. So all of these will now be 0. These 2 will be a 0. This 2 gets dropped down to a 1. And finally, all of these are 0 as well. So at this point, I only have one thing remaining. That's s equals 0 and l equals 0. So if L equals 0 and S equals 0, that is a singlet S. And because there's only one possible thing in the range for each, I strike a one by one section, which is this part. And so this then becomes 0. And I've now eliminated every combination. And that completes step 4. The final step in completing the full microstates method requires me to take the terms that I had, I had a singlet D, I had a triplet P, and a singlet S. We have the 2S plus 1, we have the L, we do not have the J. And in order to complete that, that's all I have left to do. So the rule goes that um, when we're looking at our J's, we want to figure out from L plus S down to L minus S. So for the singlet D, that's a L equals 2 and an S equals 0. So there's only one possibility. So your singlet D becomes singlet D2. For the triplet P, your L equals 1 and your S equals 1. So L plus S would be 2, L minus S is 0. So we have three possibilities, because we can go from 2 to 1 to 0. So we have triplet P2, triplet P1, and triplet P0. For the singlet S, L and S are both 0, so L minus S and L plus S are the same thing. So we have a singlet S0. So these are all the possibilities, and we want to predict the order. So these are not written out in order. 
first thing we do is we recognize that the ground state is going to have the largest spin multiplicity. Triplets are lower than singlets, uh, quartets are lower than doublets, etc. So the triplets are going to be lower than these two singlets. Now, if we have an identical spin, which we do with our three triplet states, the largest L is going to have uh, lower energy. That doesn't help us here, but it helps us differentiate between singlet D2 and singlet S0. Larger L goes with the D, so the singlet S is our highest line state. So, high to low. So we would predict that singlet S0 sits higher than singlet D2. And now in principle, we just need to figure out what to do with the triplets. So in this case, we would need to go back to the original electron configuration and recognize that if we have a um, series of states, that what we want to be able to do is differentiate between them based on what we have. And so we use Hund's rules uh, completely to do all of this. If the shell is less than half full, the lowest J has the lowest energy. So 0 is the lowest J, carbon is half full. So we expect triplet P0 to sit at the bottom. And then uh, we would build our way up. And that completes the full microstates method. Now it's important to note that this is the theory. Uh, experimental determinations can be done and will sometimes give a different order than what's predicted. What's important is that we understand the principles and the rules behind how this is supposed to work. The full microstates method can be lengthy, it can be involved, and it uses a lot of bookkeeping. But I figured it would be important to show the full method as a way of comparing against the other videos that have the shorter method that's useful for most ground state configurations.